Hello students, Michael Sanchez here. Uh, going to teach you guys how to do some vibrato things today. So hope you guys are having a good week and hopefully practicing a whole bunch. So uh, last week we had a great lesson on vibrato and today we're going to kind of continue that and talk about how to make it even more beautiful. So we have about three of, uh, students that are in the live class. Feel free to join in here if you're uh, watching uh, from the audience. And uh, hopefully after today you guys will feel more confident with your vibrato. All right, so uh, basically to start, I want to just kind of give you guys a, a brief summary of um, last week's lesson. So let me just talk about that a bit. So last week we kind of taught you guys how important it is to keep your wrist straight and flexible while you're doing vibrato. And then making sure that your knuckles are up high so that you guys can have just your fingers finding notes. And that's going to help you guys to be as flexible as possible. And then we talked about just the importance of the hand coming in and out, making sure it doesn't open up. That was something important we talked about. Also, uh, we talked about the consistency factor, so making sure that it's in a wave motion, uh, it's not scattered around. And then also using the very tip of the finger to make sure that you're using uh, to actually put pressure down on the fingerboard, uh, being that you want to have as much flexibility as possible. If you're using more of the meat of the finger, you're going to find that, that your hand's more stiff and it's not going to move as well. So those were the things that we talked about last week. And uh, if you guys didn't get a chance to watch that video, it's at violintutorpro.com in the classrooms area. All right, so uh, to kind of further talk about vibrato, uh, let's just kind of see what we can do to make it even more beautiful. So uh, what I would suggest is practicing vibrato where you're doing waves per bow. So go ahead and just play an F sharp on the D string and then a G like this for me. Like that. And then we want to kind of imitate that as far as the, the wave of the vibrato. And I just did eight of them. So maybe out there if you guys want to try that. Uh, let's do that and then maybe do a different finger. Uh, we're just going to practice the consistency of vibrato first and then we'll kind of see what we can do to make it even more beautiful. So. Now second finger. First finger. Maybe even fourth finger if you guys can do it. Like that. Okay, so now that we kind of have the wave, um, I want you guys to, you know, if you guys are at a certain level, definitely probably work on that quite a bit this week. Now, let's try to do it where we're not doing the wave at the very beginning. We're doing it more towards the middle of the bow. Uh, so basically like this. not starting the vibrato right away. Uh, basically what we're eventually going to get is more of this. Like that. So uh, that really creates kind of this more beautiful sounding vibrato when you don't start it right away. Uh, although there is times where you do want to start it right away, so this just gives you another option. So I'll give you an example in a song um, how I would, wouldn't start the vibrato technically right away. So this is kind of what we're trying to practice right now. So, all right, so right there I didn't do the vibrato. So this would be me doing it right away. But I might do it differently. I might go... That. So we're kind of practicing that idea of not starting it right away. So 
questo. So that's what we're trying to uh, potentially work on. Now, if you guys haven't done a lot of vibrato, that might be challenging to do it uh, and vary it that way. So this depends on where you're at. Very good. Um, so anything, if you're having trouble, it probably has to do with the stiffness of your hands. Uh, so definitely work on some of the things that we talked about last week with flexibility. It's really important to have your hand up high and good uh, technique with the left hand, good fundamentals. All right, uh, next I want to talk a little bit about the right hand, how that plays a big role in the beauty of vibrato. So a lot of people uh, kind of overlook that fact that vibrato in the right hand, or what you do in the right hand really affects how vibrato sounds. So I'll do that same thing again. Um, but what I'm going to do is just kind of have a, a stiff right hand while I do that. that. So I'm not having good fundamentals in my right hand. I'm very stiff in the hand. I'm not using my index finger very well. I'm pressing with my fingers up against the bow. Uh, and this relates to actually uh, the class I did on Monday uh, about um, fundamentals uh, at the beginner level, but it really applies to uh, really any student. But it's very easy for you guys to, to not do proper bow uh, mechanics. So, but as you can see, it also affected my vibrato. Right? So I want to have this flexibility in my right hand to be able to get the sound that I want. Like that. So very important. Keep your thumb curved, your pinky curved as you're doing vibrato. Uh, this is what might happen as you guys are starting the vibrato. You might kind of tense up here. So ba da ba da ba. Tense hands as well. So we want these both to be very loose and flexible. So even though I'm doing this, right, my hand is still doing the same thing it would be doing in every other note. So let's practice that. Let's practice. Um, uh, let's just start warming up this open strings. Okay, that's probably as easy for most of you watching that right now. Um, but what I want you to just think about is how relaxed your wrist was as you're doing the most simplest thing in the world, which is playing open string, right? There's no restriction, hopefully, with your fingers. You're, you're relaxed. Nothing's going on. Okay, so I want you to do four of those open strings, and then I want you to go into doing vibrato. But I want you to think about the right hand and how it's important to keep it the same as what we did with open strings. happen if I wasn't um, relaxing my hand? Right? My thumb's stiff. My pinky's pressing. A whole bunch of bad stuff is going on there. So, yeah, it's all about uh, having the same mindset regarding the right hand, even when you're doing vibrato. But I think it's very easy to, to kind of get out of that. So, um, as different things are happening on the violin, say you're crossing strings, if you're less advanced or if you're shifting in different positions, um, it's going to be very easy to not think too much about the right hand. So I want you guys to focus on that this week in whatever whatever level you're at, even if you're a pure beginner. Uh, just try to always think about what you're doing here. Even if you're starting out properly, if my hand is in a good position to start, you might be stiffening up as you go towards the tip. Or as you're doing this really tough technique, uh, you might just be kind of grabbing on for dear life. So that, that causes you to not sound as good on the violin. Uh, and it really relates to how uh, beautiful or not beautiful your vibrato will sound. Uh, one thing that uh, for maybe some of you guys that are a little bit more advanced um, regarding vibrato, one thing you can do is you can add weight into the bow kind of towards the end of the vibrato to kind of give it this 
this richness um, compared to the very first part of the stroke. So here, here's uh, me not putting any weight in the bow. Okay. This is me putting weight into the bow toward the end of it. pressure and that's affecting um, kind of the depth of the end of the vibrato right so that's maybe a little bit more advanced uh, but it really uh, is something to think about um, what you're doing in the front of the hand obviously everything else has to be relaxed right there's nothing changing there but what I'm doing here is really important so uh, for some of you guys even that are maybe intermediate players you might not know a lot about you know, the, the front of the hand, what it should be doing here. Um, I've had students that have been with me for three, four years, or before me didn't take lessons, but have been taking like three, four years, didn't even know that they should be using the index finger to, to guide the ball. Uh, it's very important um, to get precision. So basically, um, think about uh, writing. So when you write, you have to have precision with your fingers to be able to get accurate with those letters. You're using the tips of the fingers. You're trying to get accuracy. You would never grab a pen like this and then expect to write perfectly like this, right? It's the same concept. So the bow is your is the, the pen. So you have to use the small muscles to get accuracy, which relates to the vibrato, as far as you know that depth of weight um, relates to you know playing fast. <laughs> To get that accuracy and that precision, it's the same concept as writing, right? Using those fingers, using the index to guide the bow. So if I use my whole hand, if I use everything, obviously we're going to get a non-precision sound. I'm not going to be able to move the bow fast. We're going to have trouble putting weight into the bow. We're going to have trouble crossing strings cleanly. You know, so if I if I have the concept of this, right? concept of precision, so I'm using my index and everything else is relaxed, it's all right here. Now I can be an artist. So it's all right here, but just as important to be not pressing with these three fingers and definitely not with the thumb. That's one of the worst bad habits I see. Awesome. Well, let me take a couple of questions from the audience. So I'll visit the events page. Uh, I see we have Michael with us here, Jules and James and Troy. Um, if you guys want to uh, raise your hands uh, and ask a question, feel free. I'm also going to check out the events page. So hopefully you guys have all been working on your vibratos a bit. Share my screen and go to the events page a second. You guys want to prepare your questions if you have them. I'm looking at the uh, events page right now. William says, I tend up my left hand during a difficult passage that kind of glues the base knuckle of my first finger to the violin's neck. And hampers my vibrato. Yeah, really, it just comes down like the reason why I really uh, push technique, especially at first for a, be a pure beginner or really anybody, is that it leads to so many different things being done easily or not easily. So that definitely relates to vibrato, shifting, playing fast, getting a precise sound, crossing strings, um, stretching for notes. Really, it's ongoing. It's, it's, there's so many things. Um, if you don't have good fundamentals, it's going to make it really challenging. So, um, 
but William, you're working. On, you know what the thing is that you have to work on, and that's the most important thing. I find often that students don't even know about fundamentals, and then they're they're just really hampered back because of their bad form. Philip says, "Shall I get the dog out here?" He senses cats in the long distance. <laughs> yeah, Sal, you guys are, are you guys were interested in seeing my cats? Uh, they're definitely hanging around here, so maybe they'll come. Uh, here, way in the background, you guys might see her. Cool. Any of you guys here want to ask a question? Uh, Michael, how you doing? I just got to unmute you a second. Uh, you might have to unmute yourself. Sorry. There's a little button in the top toolbar. Um, let me see if I can do it for you. Yeah, it's not letting me for some reason. Okay. All right. Well, if you want to text me the question, Michael, uh, you can do that right in the text bar area or um, in the events area. Troy uh, or James, any questions? No, Troy, you're more of a beginner, so this might be something you're just like thinking about starting, right? <laughs> I would say for people that have been playing three months that have really good technique I think it's a real it's a, not a, a bad time to start vibrato um, those that uh, have been playing say three or four years uh, that's probably the time I would say for sure you should have at least tried vibrato um, although yeah it really is just about like how set up you are I think um, people that have really bad technique that have been playing three or four years are going to struggle with vibrato, where somebody that's been playing only three months that has good technique will do it much better. So, so I encourage you, hopefully, to just practice your drills and scales and all that good stuff. Jules says, uh, where should my thumb be when I'm doing vibrato in the left hand? Thank you for that question, Jules. So yeah, as you're doing vibrato, it's important to have the thumb um, lined up exactly where you should have it, even when you're not doing vibrato. So here I am in, third, in first position. My thumb is here, about an inch away from the, from the nut. That's exactly where it would be for vibrato. My thumb just kind of rocks a bit. It doesn't actually shift positions, just rocks. Shift into third position. Then it goes right even with where my first finger intonation would be in third. My thumb always follows where my first finger would land in that position. Uh, if I go below the, the thumb, that, that would be the half step below in that position, but my thumb stays. Cool. Any other questions? See how, uh, how good this joined us. Thanks for joining us. You're welcome, Jules. Any other questions? I'll go to the events page real quick. Let's see what I can find over there. <clears throat> Always appreciate you guys asking questions and um, you can always email me as well at michael at superiorviolins.com if you have any questions throughout the week. Uh, William says, Diane gave me some great tips to help me with vibrato and shifting. Very good. Yeah, we have some great instructors that are on violinturepro.com helping you guys out to uh, improve your skills. So we have about three or four of us that are constantly um, helping students and posting in the forums. Uh, so yeah, definitely check that out. Philip says, so is it true one wants to weigh the vibrato at the end instead of the beginning? Yeah, uh, it wouldn't make as much sense towards the beginning. Uh, definitely the weight of the vibrato is uh, best at the end. So, good question. Dan says, it's tempting to work on it um, on the wrist instead of the elbow. Yeah, um, I talked about that a little bit last week, you know, as far as where the vibrato should be stemming from. Should it be from the wrist or from the forearm? Uh, you said the elbow, so <laughs> this would definitely not be correct. Um, so yeah, you definitely want to choose one of the two. But the biggest thing is you have to be consistent. Uh, if you're doing it in a certain way where it's not um, you know, going the same distance and getting the same sort of, um, same sort of tone, then, then that's where you have to kind of step back a bit and maybe practice it slower. So this would even be a, 
a good way to practice uh, if you're just starting vibrato and you may be having trouble really moving the hand or the, the wrist or the forearm. Doing it really slowly like this. Some of you guys might be uh, bow grippers, like you might be, you might be people that really hold the bow tight. If that's you, you might have trouble doing what I just did because you're wanting to move the bow faster. Um, if, if you find that that's you, you should be practicing um, moving the bow as slow as possible and seeing how far, how long you can um, hold the bow uh, from the frog to the tip. So. Keep going, but I won't. Um, if you if you have trouble doing that, like if that was more like that's as slow as you can go, you're probably needing to work, work on some some things in the right hand. Um, if you have a good bow hold and you have you know good technique to be able to sustain, then that speed for the vibrato would be good. Otherwise, if, if you just kind of want to do them separately, work on these concepts separately, you can move the bow faster, maybe just do two per bow like this. I don't like that as much though because it's kind of the concept of tapping the head and rubbing the stomach, only you're tapping at the same time or rubbing at the same time. <laughs> it's actually much better to do it slower and then have the, the vibrato going slowly as well. Like that. So, just a, just a word or a tip, advice for you guys. Um, so, yeah, you know, just doing different things, practicing different things. But, yeah, it's, it's all about flexibility. And then really try to put it into your pieces. So, I suggest working on, um, you know, songs, trying to put it, like if you're just starting to put them in songs, I would put it in uh, like half notes, whole notes to start. Um, then eventually put it into quarter notes, um, eventually even even eighth notes. So let's say I'm playing, uh, let's pick a random piece. Um, start a vibrato, longer notes. I'm going to try to vibrato more of those notes. So, so the more flexible you are, and the more you have vibrato down, the more you're going to be able to do like eighth notes even. So, so this would be maybe good practice for like practicing eighth notes vibrato. The hardest part is getting the very last wave in there. So here I'll, I'll break it down to show you how um, I'm getting the very last wave. That one. That's the hardest one to get. That one. So even when I'm going fast with eighth notes, I'm focusing on that last one because that's the, the hardest one. So, so if you're not quite that good yet at vibrato, it might be more. Or if it's even uh, can't quite do that yet, then it'd be more half notes. Or eventually, so uh, raise your hand if you guys can tell kind of that last little bit how important that is. But so you don't want to go. 
guys hear that? Raise your hand if you guys hear that. Uh, it's not quite finished. It's like I'm doing it, but then I'm straightening it out. So if you're straightening it out at the end, then you're probably not quite there yet. So slow it down. We'll try to go slower yet. able to do that really fast I'm like really tense in my hand I'm actually the opposite is about as relaxed as you can get my finger is what's pressing into the fingerboard obviously at the right pressure point not overly pressing just enough to where I get the pressure I need then it's all just movement that allows me to be consistent you guys might be thinking as I'm doing that fast that I'm like this I'm not I'm like this. You could grab my hand right now and it'd feel like I'm asleep. Other than my finger. <laughs> I wouldn't sleep like this. Alright? So, if you're having trouble with flexibility, just, just know that every violinist that does it really well, they're as relaxed as you can get. And it comes back to the concept that from here on down, there's no tension in my hand. So you could grab my hand right here, and I can still play the violin just as easily. There's no need for my hand to do anything, no matter what note I'm playing. Okay? So now, if truly my hand is relaxed down here, because I'm not using it, right? There's no need to use it. And I'm just putting my finger where it needs to go. Now I can move just as fast as I can move like this. Right? I'm sure some of you guys could do this, right? Or like this, fast. You guys do that. Now try now try being as tense as you possibly can be, almost to where it hurts. Now try moving fast. That's probably what you guys are doing. <laughs> some of you, right? That's that looks like this, right? Or whatever, right? I, can't, I don't even want to try it. I don't want to build that habit. Um, so, yeah, that's probably what you guys are doing. Some of you. So, I'm, I'm going from not doing this to doing that. And then just shaking. <laughs> But yeah, it's very important to not overpress, right? Don't overpress. Overpressing causes stiffness in the hand. Even, even though you're not using this, if you overpress, just your muscles are going to tense up. So it's very important just to have the right pressure down. Once you're there, now you can really excel. And then aim for the, this is like where it even goes to the next level to truly each of your finger placements are as close as they can get to the nail without touching. Right? You don't want to use your nails when you press down, but you want to be as close as you can get tonight to using the nails because that's the hardest part of the skin. That's where it takes the least amount of um, pressure with the finger to get the proper um, pressure on the fingerboard. So some of you guys should practice that. Is um, you know practicing scales, aiming for that spot aiming for just the tip and then not over pressing. So I know uh, some of you might be thinking like how does that relate to vibrato but it really does because it's all about flexibility. It's not force. Vibrato is not a force. That would that would cause a uh, <laughs> difficult to wake up in the next morning and, and do your work. If you're doing this all all day, right? This all tense and so it's actually a relaxed thing. Like I could do vibrato all day um, with no uh, with no energy loss.
Okay, wait, we have a question. Aho says, you have lovely vibrato. Um, I have a hard time with it because I kind of taught it to myself 40 years ago and it was not so good. So, yeah. Um, then you have a question. I thought it was like, my biggest difficulty is to keep my violin from moving when I do vibrato. Uh, what's the thumb doing? Mentioned that earlier. Um, is your first finger up against the fingerboard? Yeah, so uh, I'll go, we mentioned earlier the thumb is always where it should be in the right position. And then the, um, the hand is always touching the fingerboard. And it should be where I can easily move to shift. There's no extra pressure, extra hold. It's just enough to where I know where I'm at. I don't want to like do it to where I'm like feather touching. I don't need to do it that light. Just enough to where it's easy to glide, easy, easy to slide, to shift, to feel. Never getting a jerky move. Um, but yeah, nothing changes as far as uh, vibrato um, related to left hand technique. So when I teach students, I tell them four things. Thumb, hand, back, hand, high, turn, drop. There's no difference when I'm doing vibrato. Uh, there's no difference when I'm shifting other than my hand just moves up. Okay? No, there's no difference. You guys are probably overcomplicating the process. Once I'm in that position of those four steps, thumb, hand back, hand high, turn, drop. I don't care if you hold my hand as tight as you possibly can. I can play every song in the violin. But follow those four steps. Don't overcomplicate. Don't say, you know, I can't do that or... Um, I'm too old to do that. I hear that all the time. My hands are too brittle. I have, you know, whatever arthritis. My grandpa actually has arthritis, so that is, you know, something that is isn't going to help you. I hate to say it that way, but, um, but yeah, you guys get my point that anybody can do it. It's just a matter of doing those four steps: one, two, three, four, drop, and then place my finger properly so it's in that good optimal location, not overly pressing, right on the tip of the string, and then move. It's as simple as that, although it's so so difficult for some, right? For most. Many. Do one more time. Thumb and back and high. Turn, drop, place properly, move. Like that. And there's my kitten at the perfect time. You guys have gotten to know my kitten Snowflake, some of you. you want to say hello. Hey, Snowflake, say hello. Say hi to the audience. Hey. Nice. You want to walk? Oh, you want to just go around? Okay. <laughs> she likes to attack my bow. That's my bow. No? Hey, that's my bow. Look at that. The bow. Wow. <laughs> Good cat. All right, I'll take uh, one more question. You guys want to raise your hands, feel free. Otherwise, I'll yeah, I'll go check out the events area too. Yes, James, go ahead. Yes, uh, what, what is the, the tip of your finger doing when, when you're making the vibrato move? Is it lengthening, I mean bending a little bit? From the first knuckle on to the nail, is it extending a bit? Um, it's actually moving because everything else is moving. So it's the but same concept. Of, uh, if, uh, yeah, okay. Michael, you're muted. Thank you. You guys hear me now? Thank you. Sorry. Okay. 
All right, uh, raise your thumbs if you can hear me now. All right, sorry about that, guys. Um, so let's see, I should probably explain that again then. Um, okay, so basically what I was saying is that as I'm shaking somebody's hands, um, I don't need to move my fingers, I don't need to move my wrists, everything comes for the ride. Okay? Um, so yeah, even though it looks like my fingers are moving while I'm doing vibrato, they're just moving because of my form is moving. All right, so right now I'm not changing my fingers at all or changing the tip uh, or doing anything different. It just looks like I'm doing something because of the rocking. So nothing should ever change from here on down. Um, actually, if you do try to do more than what you should, that actually causes the hand tension that might be restricting your vibrato. So you want to allow it to, it's like you're, it's like you're, if you're trying to sing a song or you're trying to, you know, have a speech and like the whole time you're, you're holding your throat, you know, as, not as hard as you can, you choke yourself to death, but, you know, you know, pretty hard to where it's hard to, hard to talk. That's kind of the concept, you know, if you start changing all these different things in, in the hand and the fingers, that you're actually going to, you know, not be able to, to breathe or, or be able to get the vibrato to sound properly or be flexible like this. So, so yeah, everything it might look like there's uh, things going on there, but there's not. Good, great question. Any others? You got to take one more or a couple more. You guys are starting to ask questions now. Troy, go ahead. Yeah, Michael. Um, I'm, I suffer with the uh, tapping the head, rubbing the stomach um, problem. And do you, can can you give me some exercises maybe to help develop the both stroke and the vibrato technique, getting that motion going. Is there exercises I can do for that? Yeah, that's like the the violinist's biggest nemesis. Um, Cause I haven't started. Sort of, yeah, I have co coordination. You know, like just being able to do two different things at once, right? Yes. Um, I'm sure there's things out there, uh, you know, um, that would help coordination in general. But for violin, I think what I have students do is just really simplify and do each thing separately because uh, what you don't want to do is build bad habits while trying to do things at once that you can't do at once, right? Yes. So what I suggest is don't think this is a bad thing if you've been playing a while even. Try to just focus on left hand technique by just doing pizzicato. So that doesn't mean that you're just starting. That means that you're focusing in on left hand. You're trying to get this perfect. Right, all the things we've been talking about, and then you can work on just open strings. Maybe you're trying to really bend those fingers because you're really stiff normally. Yes. So this is where you can focus on now the right hand, while not having to do the left hand. And then when if you do that enough, if you work on this for say five ten minutes, um, you know whatever it could be a couple minutes, and then this, and then you put them together. Then I think you're going to have better coordination because you actually work on muscle memory with both, right? Right. But if you're actually trying to do them both at the same time, and you're not very good at, you know, how you're thinking about it, and, and it's like you're kind of building a little bit of bad habits um, because you're not doing both of them perfect, right? Yes. Is working on slurs would that help to work on slurs? Yeah, like for slurs. Um, Is that the same you know, concept? It really depends on where you're at, how, how advanced you are, but if you're having a really hard time, um, try to just play open strings and, and just envision a slur, you know, or uh, maybe even like press but don't press, you know, because what some students do, they might actually change their bow hand while the slur is changing, like this, right? the fingers going down so they're changing their muscle in their right hand. So yeah, try to just, uh, the biggest tip I would give you, Troy, or anybody, is um, try to simplify when you're having trouble. Okay, thank you, Michael. Welcome. Anybody else? Yes, Michael, are we good now? Yeah, good. Can you hear me? Hey, hey, good. Good to see you. Good, good. Hey, hey uh, when I'm trying to do the wave, I'm practicing for the uh, uh, 
vibrato, I'm getting an awful lot of movement out of my neck. It seems like every time I, I move my forearm, you know, to and fro, the, the neck is going up and down. You know, it seems like I, 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 I'm relaxed, I'm anchoring, you know, I'm anchoring with my chin, but uh, when, when, I, when I move that forearm, my, my neck is moving. Okay. Um, yeah, I'd be, I would love to see. Maybe I could, I, I could definitely help if you have your instrument. But uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not at home tonight. So That's all right. I don't. So, so you're saying your neck is moving as you're trying to move the vibrato? No, no, just the the, the neck of the violin. The violin oh. is moving up and down. I was trying to envision this moving oh. while you're doing. I was like, oh, I don't know. That could be a tremor or something. No, no, it's, <laughs> my neck's not moving. It's it's got that uh, chin chin rest, uh, you know, anchored down on my shoulder. And then when I when I start moving the arm, the the, the neck of the violin goes up and down. Okay. Yeah. I, I was having trouble envisioning that for a second. I was going to say, yeah. Okay. Um. So yeah, basically, uh, you know, good shoulder rest is important. Um, having this extremely stable as you're holding it, which takes good shoulder and chin pressure. Um. So if you don't have a good shoulder rest, you might be uh, you know, the violin might not be very stable, so try to have somebody try to take it away from you. So it shouldn't be that, it should be easy for it to just go right out of your chin shoulder. Mm -hmm. um, try to position it maybe differently as far as left or right. It's really getting in the, in the snug position. Um, that's number one. The next thing you might be doing is just grabbing too tight here. So try to practice sliding up and down. So try doing this. And focusing on what you're doing here, and then confirming that you're flexible and not jerky with the shift, right? So it shouldn't be should be really smooth. If you can't do that, then there easily could be a problem with how, how much you're grabbing the fingerboard. And then if you're grabbing the fingerboard too tight and you're trying to do vibrato, the, you know, your instrument's going to move. Okay. Hey, the other night you gave a suggestion of, of, of pointing the uh, scroll toward the right side of the music stand. Yeah. And uh, that really helped, helped me out because I was probably too too in line, too in line with my shoulders, and brought it back around, you know, toward my right, and that, that really helped out. That was a good suggestion. You know, something that simple helped helped a lot. Yeah, uh, just to give you guys uh, instead on that. So I always tell students to square their shoulders to the music stand, and then I tell them to make sure that the violin scroll is pointed at the left side of the stand. The last students have their violin way out in outer space. Yeah. And uh, it causes the arm to be really stiff at the tip and causes things to happen like the fingers to straighten out as you're playing. So unless you're a virtuoso violinist and you're trying to get the violin to point more at the audience with the F-hole, some of the best violinists in the world have their violin like this. Um, but for more beginner intermediate players, even some advanced, I think it's a really big benefit to have it more square. So, I mean, I could easily play the violin out here because I've been playing for 25 years. So there's no issue with what I'm doing in my bow hand, but some of you guys might build bad habits that way, so that might be a good adjustment. Cool. All right, any other questions? Thanks for joining us, Mike. It was good to always see you. Raise your hand if you have any. Well, I'll go to the events page real quick and see what I can find. Uh, William says, it sounds like the Whistler exercises I'm working on. I think it might be. That's where I got that from, William. <laughs> but you're working on uh, the Whistler. That's good. Uh, Philip says, if we listen or play certain time periods of music, are we more likely to hear vibrato, did Bach and Vivaldi play vibrato as much as Haydn and Mozart? It's a really good question, Philip. Um, you know, anything that, if things that get older in time, like, you know, back in the Haydn days, you know, more Baroque era, things are a little bit more simpler. I would say there's maybe a little bit less vibrato, um, but it's, I don't know if that's a, a rule of thumb. Um, I mean, Paganini, I'm sure he did, you know, some crazy things with vibrato and all that. But, um, but yeah, I think uh, 
you know, any Baroque music is a little bit more, uh, a little simpler in ways. All right, let's see. Everybody said I was going muted. Sorry, guys. <laughs> uh, Julian says, I do wrist vibrato, but I'm trying forearm. Is there a combination? Great question. Go back. So uh, I think um, doing both is actually a, can be a bad habit um, because it's sort of like you're trying to build this machine that's always doing the same thing. So if I'm doing forearm vibrato, I'm trying to create this consistency. If I start to try to combine both, I can kind of get a little bit too wild and, and uh, uh, a little too out, out of line. So I always relate vibrato between wrist and forearm to playing miniature golf, right? So it's like when, when somebody's trying to uh, hit the ball into the hole, they're focusing on that consistent stroke of the putter. You wouldn't see them starting to like use their wrists and move, try to hit the ball, right? We want to have that consistent motion when we're putting. Or we want to go way down here and start changing much stuff. So yeah, we want this, this very accurate motion. So I want to do both for that reason. Try to be simple as possible. Try to focus on flexibility on the things we talked about today as far as uh, close to the string, uh, knuckles up high, good left-hand technique. Um, not changing anything in your arm, not trying to force it. Uh, I'll, I'll talk about this, the steps one more time just to show you guys how I'm not going to change from my steps. And it's, uh, it's all about just consistency and, and the same things. Step one, thumb. Step two, hand back. Step three, hand high. Turn, drop, place properly, move consistently. That's all it is. Nothing different. So I don't change the way my hand is. I don't change the fingers. Um, I don't change the height of my hand. If you can do those six steps, you'll be able to play every single note and do every vibrato motion. Let's take a look at my cat a second, see how cute she's being right now. She's in my violin case at the time. And it looks like she's playing with the, or the, the blind screen thing. Yep. So I find her in my cases all the time. This is pretty standard. I could close it on her, but that wouldn't be nice. <laughs> She's the mascot. All right. Any other questions? All right. Oh, uh, Helga has, a, has an animal over there. Go ahead and show me. Yeah, I want to see. Is that a dog or a cat? I couldn't tell. Ah, oh, cat. My favorite. I'm a cat guy. What's her name? Oh, we got to unmute you. Uh, can you, un you got to unmute yourself, although this is very entertaining just watching. Okay. Now, How you doing? Now. Yeah, I can. Yeah. So his name is Renard. Uh, he's a stray that we rescued out of our backyard when he was trying to catch birds when he was about a year old. Nice. Very so. cute. <laughs> you have a lot of cats? We have five. Oh, my. That's cool. He's no longer cute. He just sleeps under my desk. Very nice. How you been? Uh, keeping busy. Got a, a concert coming up, so I'm working on that. Very cool. What are you guys? Uh, what are you guys gonna play? Oh, uh, let's see. The solo ensemble concert that we're playing. I don't know what else is gonna happen. I'm gonna be performing a uh, movement from my Handel Sonata. And uh, then uh, a few weeks after that, we have a concert. The entire uh, symphony is going to have a concert. We're going to be playing a number of pieces, uh, a part of a Beethoven symphony, uh, the Hebrides uh, Overture, um, a couple of pieces from Hosts the Planets, 
Oh, clients are cool. Yeah, that's some challenging stuff. Our, we, we just got a new director, and he's really ambitious. <laughs> You're breaking up a bit, um, but I could catch most of that. I heard the planets and everything else, so very cool, and good to see you. Awesome. All right, any other questions? I see uh, Julie or Cynthia is practicing over there. How you doing, Cynthia? Hi. Hi. How you doing? I'm good. I'm sorry I was late. I had to figure out the whole Google Hangouts application. So, um, hey, you made it in. Very cool. How how's things been going with you? Well, I am extremely beginner. I just purchased my interest instrument about three weeks ago. So um, I took violin a long time ago when I was like in fifth grade to like eighth grade, and. Uh -huh. uh, so I'm slowly beginning to remember some of those lessons, but I'm like totally a beginner. So. Okay, I I feel like you you were in the classes like a long time ago. Is that is that right? Yes. Okay, I I I remember you. Yeah. Yeah, long time ago. So. Yeah, that was back in when I did the hangouts, like in 2013, I think. So you. Yeah, it was. A, and I and you know at the time my my job just wasn't conducive to my learning, so I'm in a position now where I can. Kind of spend a little more time with it. So, cool. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you figured it out, and uh, you're here to to learn. So, great. Yeah, thank you. Do you have any questions or anything? Uh, no, I because I, I missed so much of this lesson, but um, you know, I'll I'll record my questions and be ready for the next session. <laughs> okay, that sounds great. Good to see you. Thanks. All right, well, hopefully you guys uh, are going to practice this week and work on your vibrato uh, and everything else. So, um, oh, we have one question from James. Go ahead, James. Yes, uh, I, I took your uh, vibrato challenge, 28-day challenge. Yeah. And, uh, I think I'm on, like, day 45 or something. Um, <laughs> but uh, the uh, one of the, the – um, Things you could check on was uh, you could upload a video and then have you critique it. Is that can we still do that? Yes, absolutely. So please Good. do that. And if you have any troubles, just email me uh, with you know the link or whatever else, and I will take a look at it. Always happy to help. Okay. Good. Cool. Uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing it. That's a, that's a lot of practice, so I, I'd expect it to. To, to be pretty good. <laughs> well, so, obviously I haven't gotten past, um, I think I'm eight waves is all I can do. So <laughs> So did you, did you start off not really being able to do it at all and, and now you're kind of getting the hang of it or? Oh, you're muted. I, uh, okay, go ahead. I, I um, I was I thought I was good, moving along pretty good and then I decided to upload you a video and when I looked at it I was doing so much wrist vibrato rather than arm and so then I kind of started over then sure yeah um wrist vibrato isn't so bad I mean actually a lot of really good players do wrist vibrato um, it's all about consistency but yeah, you probably saw, seen my videos. Um, definitely don't want finger vibrato. I uh, see some people try to do that, or elbow moving vibrato or anything like that. But yeah, it's basically one of the two, the wrist or the forearm. So choose choose your poison and then stick with it. Okay, I'm going to. <laughs> Very good. All right, maybe I'll just take a look over in the in the events area real quick, see what I can find. William's always in there. We see some great questions from him. Uh, William says, put videos in the forum. So yeah, we, we're going to do a contest soon. Um, that always inspires people to post more in the forum. So, but um, for now, hopefully some of you guys that are, you know, really into learning, you guys will um, keep, keep things going for us. So the forum is a great way to, to learn violin and um, there's a lot of people that are posting in there and asking questions, so please check that out. 
Uh, William says, Jules, keep it flexible. Flexibility is key. All right, any other questions? Next week we're going to be doing another class. Um, so uh, if you guys want to sign up for that, you can sign up right on my website, uh, right on the home page. Um, also, I put it in the events area. So uh, next week we're going to be talking about shifting. Just to give you guys a little bit of a preview on that. So it's really important, you know, to do things consistently as well when you're shifting and not actually change things. There's a lot of exercises that I teach students how to shift properly. Um, a lot of people just build bad habits that I can um, hopefully tell you guys about and, and help you guys avoid. So yeah, I highly recommend going next week, Wednesday uh, at 9 o'clock. So every Wednesday at 9 we're doing um, intermediate class. For those of you guys that are maybe looking for something a little more beginner as well, um, Monday at 8 o'clock we're doing um, classes every Monday. So uh, And we have the last two or three on the website if you want to check those out, uh, the pre-recorded lessons. And check out, check those out. We we actually last lesson we talked a lot about uh, a lot of things in the bow hand and um, even for more intermediate players I think it would be a great lesson. So, all right, any other questions? Awesome. All right, well thanks for joining us guys. Hope you guys have a great evening and um, keep practicing hard. Never give up. Don't get discouraged. If you do, email me so I can help you get out of the discouragement. It should never be a uh, a point where you say, oh, I just can't do this anymore. It's all a marathon. It's got to keep at it. Keep trying. There's going to be for every, I say for every two things that you do well, you're going to have one down, down time or down point. So but you think about it, if you keep doing that, if you keep going up two steps, going down one, two, one, two, you're eventually going to get there, right? But you don't want to go up two, go down one, then quit. That's what you don't want to do. I've, see, I've seen it too often. All right, guys, have a good evening. Talk to you soon. Bye. See you next week.